सो वेलकम 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 टू दिस अमेजिंग रिविजन ऑन इंडिया सिक्सटीन विच विल बी इन हंड्रेड परसेंट इंग्लिश राइट सो बिफोर वॉचिंग दिस रिविजन वीडियो इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दिस ऑन यूट्यूब डू सब्सक्राइब to this channel and also like the video right and also share it with your friends because a lot of effort goes into recording english videos right okay so now in this revision video what is going to be our purpose so we will record we will revise india 16 with concepts also with all the important questions having important adjustments so we will revise the concepts also right and we will also revise the important questions I am not going to solve each and every question, but yes, if we have done India sixteen previously, so we will also revise the question so that when you are solving them, you can know, you will know where you are bound to make mistakes or what are the important adjustments of those questions, right? Also, I uh, for solution of the illustrations, I have some board notes. So if you want to download the board notes, they are available on my Telegram channel. Link is in the description box, so you can join the Telegram channel and download the board notes as well. Okay, so. we are going to start the revision of india 16 in 3 2 1 and go first of all india 16 the name is ppe property plant equipment so there are following points to be discussed through this chart you will get an overview of what things are to be discussed here the first point to be discussed is definition the definition of two things the definition of pp and the definition of bearer plant now what is the definition of pp it says only three things these are tangible items held for use and expected to be used for more than one period simple what about bearer plants now what is the meaning of bearer plants do you remember we discussed one example relating to this so ideally there are something known as biological assets biological assets can be bifurcated into two parts living plants and animals living plants can be further bifurcated into two parts bearer and non bearer so what are bearer plants bearer plants are those plants which have a life of more than one year ideally these plants will generate will give you output for more than one period right so why is this bearer plants covered under indes 16 pp the only simple reason is for example let's say a mango tree a mango tree is just like a machine for a farmer like if you have a biscuit manufacturing machine such machine will give you output right similarly this mango tree will get will give output to farmer in the form of mangoes so such bearer plant having a life of more than one year are like machines for the farmer that is why they are covered under pp okay next point the recognition criteria when a, when you will recognize a pp if two recognition criteria are met first there are future economic benefits and second the cost can be measured reliably okay <coughs> next point guidance on whether the following items are to be recognized as pp whether these items will be known as pp or will be covered under any other indas so first point is spare parts standby equipments servicing equipment so the standard is very clear you have to check the definition of pp if the definition is met for these items you will call them as pp otherwise you will classify as inventory next point can you aggregate individually insignificant items the answer is yes if the items are individually insignificant if you feel they are appropriate to be aggregated you can aggregate them okay what about if you have any safety or environmental equipment whether they will be classified as pp because directly they are not involved in any manufacturing so the standard says that we know that they are directly not manufacturing any output but they indirectly assist other assets to achieve future economic benefits and hence they will be classified as pp okay sir next point is measurement so measurement can be classified into two parts one is initial measurement and second is subsequent measurement so the initial measurement will always happen at cost always 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 at cost right initial means the measurement on day one now the elements of cost depend on depends on how it was acquired if you have purchased the asset if you have acquired by the asset by purchasing it so what all elements will be included in the cost of the asset so the first point is purchase price less trade discount and rebates okay add a non refundable taxes for example if you have paid a gst if you are going to avail the credit of it you will not make it a part of your cost but if you are not going to get any credit of gst you it will form part of your cost also add all the directly attributable expenses sir what all things form part of directly attributable expenses examples employee cost cost of site delivery installation cost of testing so if you are doing any testing expense that will also be capitalized now there was some example also which was discussed for testing let's see the example now so while testing you might generate some miscellaneous income also so you will capitalize only the net cost of testing first point second one clarification was also introduced what if your testing income exceeds your testing expense so such net income 
will not be transferred to profit and loss. It will be adjusted from cost of PPE. And since your income exceeds your expense, it will be reduced from the cost of PPE. Right? This is only done in case of testing income. Right? Okay. Now, what all things are not going to be included? The following expenses are will not be included. Inauguration expense, advertising, promotional cost, training cost, admin cost, general overheads, initial operating losses, cost of relocation. Now, one important example is if you are using the idle asset as a car parking, such income from that part will also not form part of your cost. It will be transferred to profit and loss. See, the income from testing is different and the income from using the idle asset as car parking is different, right? Please remember that. Also, if you are giving any cash discount, such cash discount will be transferred to profit and loss. Simple. Okay. <coughs> the next point under the cost of asset is cost of decommissioning. So, what is the meaning of cost of decommissioning? In case you remember an example, let's say for example, we have a machine where we are installing it. The government asks us that after usage of machine, you have to restore the land. So, that means at the end of the useful life, I have an obligation to restore the land. Such restoration is known as decommissioning, dismantling or site restoration. Now, because this is a directly attributable expense we discussed in the class Y. So, because it is a directly attributable expense, it will form part of cost of PP. But now at what value will we consider this? So because we have to incur it at a future date, we will consider this at present value. Simple, right? Okay, sir. Got it. Next point is deferred consideration. Do you remember? We're taking an example in the class. Let's say I went to Chroma to buy a MacBook. So if I'm paying 2 lakhs to buy a MacBook, then it is my cost. But if I say that I will make the payment after one year, that means they will charge me some extra interest. Such interest will not be capitalized, right? It is not a boring cost. See, Capitalizing the interest happens under index 23 borrowing cost. We will discuss that part separately in index 23. As of now, we know if you are purchasing a ready-made asset and if you are incurring any interest, you will not capitalize it. Simple, right? This was the point of deferred consideration. So these are the elements of cost if you are purchasing the asset, right? Refer note number one and two done and dusted. Achha, next point. What if the asset is self-constructed? We will use the same principles like we discussed below, right? The employee which are involved in the construction, that amount will be capitalized and everything. Also, there will be some borrowing cost as per index 23 that we will discuss under index 23 only. Okay. What if the asset is acquired by way of exchange? That means we are acquiring the asset in a barter transaction. So do you remember in case of barter transaction? Achha, also one more thing before discussing this in case of decommissioning, we will add it at present value, but at at each year end, we also need to do unwinding. Do you remember this? The entry for unwinding will be interest to provision. Please remember. Just forgot to discuss that. Okay. Now, exchange of asset. <coughs> In case of exchange, there are two assets which are involved. One is the incoming asset and one is the outgoing asset. In case of incoming asset and in case of outgoing asset, at what value will we record? So, first pass the entry. Then, the outgoing asset will always go out at carrying amount. So, now the question is, at what value do we record the incoming asset? So for recording the incoming asset, we have certain preferences, right? So we have three preferences. First preference is fair value of asset given up plus cash paid if any. Second preference is fair value of asset acquired. If you have neither of these, you will use the third preference that is carrying amount of asset given up plus cash paid if any. Simple, right? This is the case. Also, we discuss some examples also. Don't worry, these board notes I will upload on Telegram. You can join that channel from the description box, okay? These notes, only these board notes, okay? I cannot upload my uh, textbook because that is copyrighted, okay? Also, there was one more case, do you remember? In exchange, whether transaction lacks commercial substance. So, when will this happen? This will happen in case when you are exchanging the assets which are of same nature, same characteristics, right? So, in this case, you will record the incoming asset. We have only one preference. That is carrying amount of asset given up plus cash paid if any. Do remember this point. So, this was the case if the asset is acquired by way of exchange. Next point if is asset is acquired by way of government grant. So, we will apply in dash 20, simple. Let's proceed further. This was initial measurement. Now let's move on towards subsequent measurement. What is the meaning of subsequent measurement? Subsequent measurement means at every year end, at what value will you, will you keep the PPE? So we have two models here. One is cost model, one is revaluation re model. So what is the meaning of these two models? It is very simple. Under cost model, we keep the PPE at carrying amount. That is cost less depreciation. Achha. What about revaluation re model? We keep the asset at fair value year. So what we do is we find the carrying amount first at the year end. Then we compute the fair value as on the same year end and then we find the revaluation gain or loss, right? So under revaluation re model, we keep the asset at fair value. Okay, sir. Now, if you are following revaluation re model, there are further five more points to be discussed. The first point is frequency of revaluation. Re How frequently will you revalue the asset? So we need to check if the value, if the fair value of asset changes very significantly or the changes are very volatile in that 
fair value. So you will compute the fair value annually. But if the changes happen very insignificantly, you will compute the fair value once in three to five years. Okay. Next point. What will be the treatment of accumulated depreciation on date of revaluation? What is the meaning of this? Let's say you are revaluing the asset. Let's take this example. I have a cost of 100 lakhs. Then we depreciate for two years. Right? We are using the asset for two years. So we depreciate for two years. Then we get then we get the carrying amount. This cost is known as gross block. This depreciation from day one till date is known as accumulated depreciation. And this carrying amount is known as net block. So when you are revaluing the asset, what will be the treatment of this? accumulated depreciation. So there are two methods which you can follow. One is eliminate the accumulated depreciation. Now how do we eliminate it? Eliminate it against the gross block. So we will pass the entry depre accumulated depreciation to gross block. Right? And the second entry is of booking the gain. PP to revaluation gain. This is the first method. The second method is you will not eliminate the accumulated depreciation. So here we will follow three steps. First we will have to find the percentage gain. How do we find this? By dividing revaluation gain by the carrying amount so you will get the percentage gain now apply this percentage gain on two amounts the gross block and depreciation and then pass the entry you will get a difference such difference will automatically be at the amount of your gain right we discussed in class the logic behind this but as of now just remember there are two methods to be discussed in real life we will follow any of the methods in exams you have to solve by both the methods if it is asked okay okay sir this was the second point treatment of accumulated depreciation on date of revaluation third point revaluation to be applied to entire class of asset so let's say i revalue my mobile phone so all mobile phones will be have to be followed at revaluation model that means if you are revaluing an item of pp the entire class to which the asset belongs should be revalued okay also there was a clarification which was given that office building in industrial building just because their surname is building that doesn't mean they are single class for example i am akash kandoi and one is akash ambani just because they both are akash that doesn't mean they have the same wealth right akash ambani is way 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 matlab, you can't even compare me with akash ambani right so just because the surname is building that doesn't mean they are same class industrial building is a different class office building is a different class so you, you can follow different methods for both these assets okay the next point under revaluation model was treatment of revaluation gain and loss so how do we treat this so ideally you have to check whether you are revaluing the asset for the first time or you are revaluing the asset subsequently if you are revaluing the asset for the first time then if you have a gain you will transfer it to oci if you have a loss you will transfer it to profit and loss simple Achha. if you are revaluing it subsequently and you have a gain so directly don't say OCI. You have to check what did you have previously in respect of this asset. So if you have a gain now and previously also you had a gain. So the existing gain will be transferred to OCI. Okay. If you have a gain now, but previously you had a loss. So first you will set off against the previous loss. That means if you have a gain now, but previously you had a loss. So first the existing gain will be set it off against the previous loss. That is the existing gain first will be transferred to profit and loss to the extent of your loss. If you have any excess gain over and above the previous loss, such excess gain will be transferred to OCI. Same is the case with revaluation loss. If you have a loss now, previously also you had a loss, sorry. If you have a loss now, previously also you had a loss. So the existing loss will be transferred to profit and loss. Okay. If you have a loss now, but previously you had a gain. In that case, in that case, <coughs> the existing loss will first be set off against the gain. That is the existing loss will first be transferred to OCI. If you have any excess loss, then you will transfer it to profit and loss. We also, I have also given certain examples in my notes. Okay. In case if you want to see, you can refer it. See, here we have given certain examples. Okay. The last point under revaluation model is transfer of re. Achha, also one more thing. We also discussed the difference between what is OCI NR and what is OCI R. So just to remind you, the basic difference is in OCI R, when the PP is sold or the useful life is over, full balance of surplus is first transferred to profit and loss our full form is reclassified to profit and loss so when the asset is ideally de-recognized from my books so you will transfer the full balance of surplus to first profit and loss and then it gets accumulated to retained earnings if you are following oci nr so in case of nr the routing will not happen to profit and loss the full balance of surplus will directly be transferred to retained earnings Right. So now we have to follow OCI R or OCI NR that is decided by India. So for PP, we have to follow OCI NR. That means whenever the PP is going out of your books, the full balance of surplus, if any, will be directly re reclassified to retained earnings. You will not root this to profit and loss. Simple. Right. So this, will, this is how it will happen. Okay. Done, sir. So 
this was the case of nr okay now next last point under revaluation model is transfer of revaluation surplus to retained earnings now when will this happen when we will transfer the surplus of bal surplus balance to retained earnings one case we just discussed when the pp is disposed or derecognized so when the pp is out of your books you will have to transfer the full balance of surplus to retained earnings this is not optional we have to do this, this is compulsory now there was one optional case also which was discussed and that was the case of excess depreciation now what is this let's take one example suppose we have a pp so we first found out the depreciation of 1 lakh each year now subsequently we revalued the asset and then after revaluing after booking again the carrying amount increased of asset and now the depreciation per annum is 1.33 so previously the dep depreciation was 1 lakh and now the depreciation is 1.33 so the difference between these two is known as excess depreciation so because of revaluation gain you are now getting a excess depreciation so such excess depreciation company has an option to transfer it from revaluation surplus to retained earnings of course being a revision i am not discussing the logics behind this just remember the procedure okay so we company is an option here it is not compulsory so what do we do in exams if in question it is mentioned that company has opted for this option then in that case you will transfer such excess from surplus to retained earnings also remember one more point this will have no impact in your profit and loss in in profit and loss you will book the full depreciation of 1.33 only okay do remember this point okay sir so this was your measurement part so third point measurement initial subsequent full is over okay i hope you are getting everything what i'm trying to say the next point is component accounting what is the meaning of component accounting it is simple if i have a single asset which has multiple significant parts with different useful life do you remember my example i had a private jet let's say this year example i have i had a private jet right so which which had a life of 10 years but the engine in this jet had only a life of 5 years and the remaining body had a life of 10 years so i will depreciate the engine separately and the body separately because they are having a useful life differently right so this is known as component accounting so they say that if you have a significant part of pp which has different useful life you will depreciate separately acha what if they had same useful life then you will depreciate together if they have same useful life you will depreciate together next point is if you are replacing any part if you are replacing let's say for example this engine had a life of five years but at the end of one year only after one year only i replaced the old engine so i replaced it with a new engine so what will you do you will add the new cost of engine and deduct the old carrying amount of engine likewise what i just did is let's say for example i replaced my old engine with a new engine worth 24 cr c year so in my carrying amount of private jet i will add the new cost of engine and deduct the old carrying amount of engine why because i'm replacing the engine so the old engine is going out and the new engine is getting installed right so entries are also given for understanding purpose but you have to do this so this is known as component accounting when it is replaced right okay <coughs> now next part is subsequent cost incurred what if you purchase an asset on particular date and after certain number of years you are incurring certain expenses so whether such expense will be capitalized or transferred to profit and loss so you have to see the nature of expenses if those are incurred in the nature of repairs and maintenance transferred to profit and loss if you have replaced any major part of the asset so in that case in that case we have already discussed we will apply component accounting that is if you have replaced any part you will add the new cost and deduct the old carrying amount next point major inspection and overhaul now this is important now what do we do in this point major inspection and overhaul so here let's say for example i have a private jet right here let's say for example i have a private jet the government says that after every five years inspection is compulsory so now the question is will i do the inspection on day one you will say the answer is no if i ask you why you will say that inspection must have already been conducted on day one na, sir when you receive the asset it would have already been after inspection on day one that means on day one you must have also paid for the inspection because the selling company will of course charge you for whatever they have done so if the asset is already inspected on day one the selling company must have charged the cost of inspection also from you that means the cost of day one inherently includes the amount of inspection but the inspection lasts only for five years because the government asks you to inspect every five years and the jet has a life of 20 years so the other part of the jet will have a life of 20 years that means in inspection also the component account will become applicable component accounting will become applicable because out of total cost whatever you have paid for inspection is only having a life of five years right and whatever you have paid for the remaining asset is having a life of 20 years so here also you will apply component accounting but here there is an inherent assumption 
that the cost of day one includes the cost of inspection. So it will not be mentioned that the day one cost includes inspection. You have to inherently assume it. The amount of inspection will be given. But you should know that the cost on total cost on day one already includes the amount of inspection. That is what you should know. So this was the fifth point. Done. Next point is land and building. If you have a land and building, these are to be accounted separately. So you will separate the land part and you will separate the building part. Generally, land has an infinite life. So it won't, it will be non-depreciable. Okay. And building has a finite life, it will be depreciable. Okay. In rare cases, even land might have finite life, right? Deteriorating land maybe. So in that case, you can depreciate. But if nothing is mentioned, you will assume land's life to be infinite and you will not depreciate it. Very simple. Is this clear, guys? Okay, sir. Depreciation. Now, next point is depreciation. So, under depreciation, three things are discussed. One is method. So, we have three methods. SLM, WDV, units of production. Discussed here. Okay. But one thing, depreciation based on revenue is inappropriate. What is the meaning of this? Let's say, for example, you produced multiple units. You used the machinery. But the sale was zero. You did not sell even one unit of that produced uh, output. Right. So, now... The company is saying that because the sale was zero, I will not depreciate. Is this allowed? The answer is no. You cannot depreciate on the basis of your sales. Even if the sales was zero, can I say the machine was the machine was used? So you will charge depreciation. Right? Okay. Next point is depreciation period. Commencement and cessation. So ideally, when you will start the depreciation, when the asset is available for use. Simple. And when will you cessate the depreciation? When will you stop the depreciation? If you have studied index 105, then you will stop. I earlier off when the asset is classified as as per 105 if you have studied 105 you will come to know otherwise leave it or when the asset is sold or de-recognized that means when the asset is out of your books you will stop the depreciation right? and start when when the asset is available for use now put more emphasis on this point why let's take one example let's take I was constructing the asset so from April 24 to October 24 it went into construction from 1st November 24 it was available for use but I actually started to use it from 1st Feb 25. So this is put to use. So ideally when will I start charging depreciation? The day when it was ideally put to use or the day when it was available for use. So you will start charging depreciation from the day it was available for use. Please remember this part. Okay. Done. The next point, achha, next point is depreciation amount. So the maximum depreciation amount of an asset is cost minus residual value. Do you remember this point? Okay. Next is what is the meaning of residual value? It is nothing but the value of asset at the end of the useful life. Okay. What is the meaning of useful life? Useful life means the life during which you will get the economic benefits of the asset. Okay. It might be shorter than the economic life. Right. Next point. Annual review as per India said. What does it say? Depreciation method, residual value, useful life. You need to review it at each year end. If there is any change, you will account it as per a change in accounting estimate. What is the meaning of this? That is, you will get prospective effect of these changes. Prospective means you will not change the amount of previous years. If there is any change in any of these, you will change it prospectively for future years. Okay. About impairment, we will discuss in index 36. Then the next point is derecognition. What is the meaning of derecognition? It means to remove the asset out of your balance sheet. Right. So when do we remove the asset? In two cases, when the, either the asset is sold or when the life is over, right? If you have sold the asset, if you have sold the asset, some gain loss might arise. Any gain loss which is arising on sale will be transferred to profit and loss. But do remember, if there is any profit on sale, it will be transferred to other income category and not revenue from operations. Okay, do remember this. Last point is changes in existing decommissioning, restoration and similar liabilities. Now, what is the meaning of this? Let's say, for example, you knew on day one that you have to incur one CR for decommissioning after 10 years. Now, after 4 years, you came to know that instead of 1 CR, we have to incur 1.2 CR. This is known as changes in decommissioning amount. So, this change is not happening because of unwinding. Our original estimate has changed now. So, what is to be done with this now? So, to give the effect of this change, first, you need to check whether the asset is being carried at cost model or the asset is being carried at revaluation model. If you are carrying the asset at cost model, the change will be adjusted from the cost of PP. Sir, how to pass the entry? It is very simple. The change can be in two categories. Either there is an increase in provision or decrease in provision. If the provision is increasing, so ideally a liability is increasing. So you will say two provision. Now, under cost model, you have to adjust this increase from the cost. So you will debit the cost of PP. So you have to remember the entry in such a manner, right? Achha, if there is a decrease in provision, so you will say two PP, uh, sorry, you will say debit provision because provision is reducing, liability reducing means debit it. Balancing figure will be cost of PP. So you will say 2PP. 
ओके इफ द असेट इज बिंग कैरेड एट रीवेल्युएशन मॉडल एंड इफ देर इज एनी चेंज इन डीकमिशनिंग सो यू विल एडजस्ट द चेंज फ्रॉम रीवेल्युएशन गेन लॉस Why not from cost, sir? Because the asset is already at fair value. We cannot adjust the fair value now, right? So if there is any change in decommissioning and the asset is at revaluation model, you will adjust the change from revaluation gain loss. That is, if the provision is increasing, so you will say two provision. Now here you will apply nominal account rule. That means if <coughs> the difference is coming in debit side, debit or expenses and losses, so you will say revaluation loss. Acha. If the provision is reducing, that means you will debit the provision. Now the difference is coming on credit side. Right, so credit all incomes and gains. So you will say to revaluation, okay, as simple as that. So these were the concepts which we just revised. The concepts are now go, goa, gone. But in FR, studying concepts only isn't sufficient. So now, why not? Let's move on towards certain important questions. So what we will do is we will not discuss all the questions. We will revise all the important questions which I call it as LDR. Okay. So first LDR question is. illustration number 8 which you can find in my textbook of course you should see once again there is the, this revision is not a replacement of writing practice first thing second thing ldr means not those question which will 100% come in exams these are those question which cover all your concepts but of course it is advised that you revise all other questions also okay just a disclaimer in case okay so now the first illustration is illustration number 8 which is important so now what was there in this question i will try to give you a brief of this question so we had a machine of 1 cr with no component breakdown okay life was 10 years at the end of 6th year one major component was replaced okay and the value of new term new component was given so we replaced one component so this is covered under component accounting right so what is to be done here so what we will do is the replacement happened after a period of 6 years so now chalo let me uh, <coughs> show it to you here so let's say i had an asset life of 10 years so first i will depreciate for 6 years we will get the carrying out at the end of 6th year now this asset might have multiple components but the bifurcation was not given maybe because the useful life of all the components is same so what they did was out of these all components they replaced one component turbine so what we will do in replacement we will add the new value we will deduct the old carrying amount so we added the new value but the old carrying amount is missing here so we have to find the old carrying amount and how do we find it so we have to make some assumptions discount it is given so what we will do now so ideally we made a assumption here that if the new turbine is worth 45 lakhs after 6 years what would have been the value on day 1 that is before 6 years so we discounted this 45 lakhs we got the old turbine value on day 1 now we don't want the value of turbine on day 1 we want the value as on 6th year end so we will depreciate this for 6 years assuming the life of this turbine is also 10 years so we depreciate by 6 years we got the carrying amount of old turbine at the end of 6th year so we reduced it we got the new carrying amount of the asset after the replacement simple also whenever you are giving an illustration it is recommended to give one two lines of concepts to uh, gain full marks in the exams okay so this was illustration number 8 which was a good question then we will come towards illustration number 12 Now this is a very 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 good question. Let's revise this question again. So what does it say? We have a land worth ten million, including legal cost. No problem. Okay. Then we are doing some construction which commenced on first May. So there are certain cost given. First we need to see which cost are to are to be capitalized. So preparation leveling of land capitalized. Purchase of material capitalized. Employee cost for construction two lakhs per month. Right. So how much we will capitalize? Only capitalized during the period of construction. So the construction started on first May and it went on till thirtieth November. So it went on for seven months. So we will only capitalize the salaries of employees for seven months. Direct overheads again given. So direct overheads are capitalized for seven months because per month is given. Then general overheads were given here fifty thousand. Do not capitalize. Car parking income. Do you remember during concept I told you car parking income will not be capitalized. It will be transferred to profit and loss. Okay. Relocation expense transfer to profit and loss. Opening ceremony expense transfer to profit and loss. Simple. Okay. The factory was completed on thirtieth November and production began on first Feb. Do you remember it was ready on thirtieth November, but we started to use on first Feb. Doesn't matter. We will start the depreciation when the asset was available for use. So start from thirtieth November. Okay. Then here, information is given for component accounting that the factory had a life of forty years, but it had also a roof, representing thirty percent of total cost. Which have a life of twenty years, so we'll do it. Okay. Next paragraph is for decommissioning. We will take that at present value. Okay. Next paragraph is for borrowing cost. So if you know the index twenty three, you will understand this paragraph as well. Okay. What was required? They required the carrying amount of factory as on year end. 
they don't require the carrying amount 30th November. They require the carrying amount on year end. That means you will get the value on 30th November and you will depreciate it by four months. So you will get the value on year end. So how do we do it? See, so what we did was we first uh, took all the capitalized expenditure. We found out the total fair value or oh, total cost of factory. Sorry. Then we wanted depreciation, but you cannot compute the depreciation directly because there are multiple components. So ideally, if I ask you how many components are there, so you will take two, you will say two components, building and roof, but your answer is wrong. Ideally, there are three components. There is one land also. Do you remember in concept I told you you have to separate the land as well, right? So you have three components. One is land. The value of land is given 100 lakhs. Remaining is building. Under building, you have two parts. One is 30% roof and the 70% is remaining building. So you will depreciate only the building aspect. Roof, you will depreciate assuming 20 years life and building you will depreciate assuming 40 years life. So you will get the total depreciation and then you will reduce this depreciation to find the carrying amount on year end. Simple. This question is done and dusted. Okay, this was illustration number 12. Now we move towards illustration number 13. A good question categorized into case A and case B. What is this question all about? We have a PP worth 100 million, useful life having 10 years, decommissioning of 5 million, discounted of 8%. So what needs to be done now? So we have to... Uh, it says that decommissioning is 5 million incurred after 10 years. So now what do we do is we first have to find the present value. Okay. We will find the present value first and then we will add the present value to the cost of the asset. Done, sir. They are saying that we are following cost model. What do they want from us? First, they want the carrying amount of PP and the decommissioned liability at the end of each year. In two cases. First case, assuming there is no change in the decommissioning expense. That means our estimate of 5 million holds true. Right. So how do we compute this? So now this is going to be very simple. One sec. I'll just open the solution for you as well. Uh, one sec. Here it is. Yeah. Here. So illustration number 13, you can find it out. So we had a cost of 100 million. We added present value of decommissioning got total cost of 102.32. Okay. Now case one, no change existing decommissioning. They want us to compute the carrying value of PP and the value of decommissioning at each year. And so what will you do? You will take the opening balance. You will reduce the depreciation for PP and you will find the closing balance. For decommissioning, what will you do? You will take opening. You will unwind by 8%. You will find the closing balance. So this you have to do for the all 10 years. So we did this. Case A was simple. Now case B. At case B, it says that our estimate changed. At the end of fourth year, we came to know that instead of 5 million, we have to incur 8 million. We came to know about this when at the end of fourth year. So what is to be done now? Now we came to know that at the end of 10th year, not 5 million, but we have to incur 8 million. So first take out the present value of 8 million as on the end of fourth year. So why fourth year? Because we are standing at the end of fourth year. So we will discount this 8 million by 6 years. Why? Difference between these two. 10th year end and 6th, fourth year end. So we will discount by 6th year. 6 years. So, you will get the new present value of decommissioning. Compare this with the old present value, which you can find above. So, as per the original estimate, the old present value for 4th year end is 3.16. So, this is the new present value. This was the old present value. You will come to know the amount of increase in present value of decommissioning. In question, it was mentioned that asset is at cost model. So, you will adjust from the cost of the asset. So, henceforth, from 4th year end or from day 1 of 5th year, the carrying amount of asset will change and the value of decommissioning will also change. So, your depreciation will also be revised. Your unwinding will also be revised simple. So this is your illustration number 13. Again, highlighting the fact that if you are not comfortable with the solution you have, you can download the board notes. You can see the solution. Second thing, revision of question is not a replacement of writing practice. You have to do it. The revision helps in recalling the question so that you can solve it in a quicker manner. Okay. Do remember that part. Okay, sir. Now next LDR question is 13 was done. Okay, 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 done, 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 done. Now we move on towards illustration number 19, one of the favorite questions. Now, what does this question talk about? It says we have a plant and a liability of decommissioning. The value of plant already includes present value of decommissioning. Very good. Okay. Now, first, on 31st March 14, that is after three years, we have to perform fair valuation. But the issue is the fair value given is after deducting decommissioning amount. See, the cost of asset includes decommissioning now. So even the fair value should include decommissioning. So how do we do it? See, wait, I will show you the solution also. So we have a PP first of 1,20,000. First depreciate for three years so that we can get the carrying amount on 31st March 14. Then on the same day, fair value is given. So it is given 1,15,000, but this is excluding decommissioning. So add the value of decommissioning, you will get the total value. Now, if you compare with the carrying amount, there is a gain. So we book the gain. Okay, we get the revised carrying amount. We show the balance sheet extract. Simple. Now, what happens later on? After one year, on in 31st March 15, it says that the present value of decommissioning reduced by 5,000. Here, directly the amount of reduction is given. In illustration number 13, we had to compute the increase or decrease amount. Here it is directly given. 
so we will give the effect in next year so we will come one year ahead by depreciating the asset so first we came one year ahead by depreciating the asset okay and we also came one year ahead for decommissioning amount so we unwinded the interest for one year now the question says that there is a decrease by 5000 right decrease by 5000 but where do we adjust such decrease so now in this question the asset is not at cost model it is at revaluation model so you will adjust from re sorry you will adjust from revaluation gain loss right so we will pass the entry because there's a reduction we will say provision account debit to revaluation gain now where will such gain get transferred where will such gain get transferred so do not say directly ocinr because this asset is already at revaluation model you will have to check previously what did you have so in this case previously also i had a gain now also i'm having a gain so this gain will also get transferred to oci okay one thing done okay on 31st march 15 itself it said on 31st march 15 there are two two adjustments one is reduction of decommissioning and one is also performing the fair valuation again so we will again the fair value is given excluding decommissioning at the revised value of decommissioning you will get the fair value there is a loss now such loss where do we transfer directly profit and loss the answer is no because the asset is at revaluation model you will have to check what did you have previously so previously i have a gain of 15 600 and also a gain of 5000 so i have enough gain to adjust this loss so this whole loss will be adjusted against oci done i gave the extract done and dusted okay this was my illustration number 19 which is done and dusted okay let's proceed further <coughs> now illustration number 23 it is ldr but it is simple why this question talks about the two treatments of depreciation do you remember when you revalue the asset we have two uh, methods to treat the accumulated depreciation either we will eliminate it or not eliminate it so this is simple you can solve this on your own okay but this is important question okay the next question which we solve is illustration number 25 uh, a question which is only worth eight lines but have a lot of adjustments so here what is to be done please read it carefully so we have a machine of 30 lakhs 30 lakhs machine is there after five years the wdv is 17.5 the life is not given with but we know during this five years we have depreciated the machine by 12,50,000, right? We have depreciated the machine by 12,50,000. So through this, we can find the life. How? Depreciation for five years is 12,50. That means for per annum, it is 2,50. So if you divide the cost by this per annum depreciation, you will get the life as 12 years. Okay, sir. Then they say, after five years, there has been an upward revaluation. So we will, we will book a revaluation gain. Okay. Next line, it says that, heaven availed the option given by India's of transferring some of the surplus as the asset is used by the enterprise what is what do they mean by avail the option they in this line they are talking about the option of transferring the excess depreciation from surplus to retained earnings do you remember this part yes okay then in 2008 there was a downward revaluation and then in 2010 they sold the asset now what what is asked we have to prepare ledger of machine for the whole useful life okay so how do we do it so ideally in this question what we did was let me open this question first one sec so ideally first we found out the uh, life then i gave you a timeline what all things happened during the tenure okay so first we purchased after five years upward revaluation then after two years downward revaluation during downward revaluation revised useful life is also given okay and then after two after two or three years machine has been sold okay so first for first five years we just depreciated the machine okay then after fifth year on this date there was a revaluation so we prepared a working note and found out the revaluation gain first time revaluation transferred to oci Okay, so transferred. Then we depreciated, we found out the revised depreciation because there is a gain. So the depreciation will increase. We found out the revised depreciation. Okay, sir, for two years. Then there was a revaluation loss. So we found the loss amount. Now, where will this loss get transferred is the important aspect. So ideally, you will say profit and loss, the answer is no. We are having a gain also previously. How much gain did we have? 1,75. So you will say that, sir, out of this, 1,75 will be transferred to OCI, remaining profit and loss. But that is also the wrong answer. Why? Because out of 1,75, company is also availing the option now of transferring excess depreciation. So out of 1,75, company charged excess depreciation for two years. How come? See, previously it was charging 2,50 per annum. After revaluing, it is charging 2,75 for two years. That means it charged 25,000 per annum excess depreciation for two years, right? So out of 1,75,000 surplus, 50,000 was already transferred to retained earnings. That means in surplus, you have only 1,25,000. So out of the total loss, only 1,25,000 will be adjusted from OCI. Balance loss will be adjusted from profit and loss. We book the loss amount. Then we dip 
appreciated for the further two years and then we sold the asset on sale we booked we got a profit on sale this is the realized profit so transfer it to profit and loss do practice this question it is a very 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 good question okay so done with this question then okay then there, there was illustration question number two again a good question what is given here is we are manufacturing an aircraft okay so cost are given so basic material we will capitalize okay recoverable gst taxes which are recoverable will not form part of the cost okay employment cost is given for three years but if we read the whole question it says that the construction went on only for two months sorry it was given for three months the construction went only for two months so you will capitalize the amount only for two months so two months we will capitalize one month will be transferred to profit and loss okay overheads are given 900 but below it was given that out of this 900 300 is abnormal loss so abnormal loss is never capitalized so you will capitalize only 600 okay professional fees capitalized this expected dismantling present value information is given below we will capitalize at present value okay these two information taken care of decommissioning information taken care of the important part here lies here it is said that there is an inspection which is to be incurred every four years right the amount as per current prices is 3000 that means do you remember the inherent assumption what was the inherent assumption whatever is the total cost of pp right in that total cost the amount of inspection will already be included so first we found out the total cost of pp then we said this total cost will be bifurcated into two components one is inspection 3000 amount is given life is four years balance asset will have a life of eight years this was also given so depreciate accordingly for 10 months because the asset got ready on 31st may so depreciate only for 10 months in the current year extract was asked so how do we present the extract in extract of balance sheet pp will appear also decommissioning will appear but decommissioning present value will not appear at this value because this is the value on 31st may we won the value on 31st march so you have to unwind the interest for 10 months as well so we will unwind the interest for 10 months we will get the value on march and also prepare the profit and loss extract this is what was asked in this question so this question is also done this was question number three um yes so only this much important questions of course you should refer the remaining questions as well and with this we have we have completed the revision of india 16 i hope this revision was helpful and with the completion we can say Tin -ta -e -in -a -e -a 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 do you know there are south indian songs which which have so much vibe that you feel like dancing so from my side you can listen to one south indian song and dance your what what you can say <laughs> dance your heart out yeah so on that note in hindi generally i use this word we have made this india sarak 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 in in i guess telugu it is said jarugu 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 means sarak 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 means we have completed this in days we have told this in days go goa gone okay so i hope you like the session i hope this revision is helpful if it is helpful do leave a comment because that will motivate me to provide more revision videos okay and also again you can find the board notes on the telegram channel if you have watched till here do like it and do subscribe to the channel okay share it with your friends as well so thank you so much. Also, if you want to buy my lectures, they are available on bbvirtuals.com. So you can uh, visit bbvirtuals.com and enroll the full English batch as well. Okay, if you if you want, I can show it to you. Uh, how how can you enroll the full English batch? One sec. Uh, so you can visit bbvirtuals.com. You can go to video lectures. Here you will find my full English batch. Okay, so you can enroll this if you wish to. Okay, so till then, thank you so much. Uh, bye bye everyone. Take care. See you all.